Hello and welcome to today's lesson which is on uh, probability sample spaces. So today we're going to get started by looking at a little game. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, this here. Here we go. So this is what we're going to be looking at first of all. And the game we're going to play is that we're going to take two dice, okay, and we're going to roll both those two dice, and you're going to pick a horse with this number on, and you're, we're going to see whether you win or not, okay? So we've got lots of different horses here. I'll make it big so you can see it. So we've got um, Racing Ryan, Speedy Sam, Fast Fiona, Barry Brisket, so that's four, <coughs> Gad Gradual Gary, Idle Ian, Lazy Luke is seven, Sim Slow Simon is eight, Pronto Paul is nine, Hypersonic Harry is eight, Rapid Boy is 11, and Quick Quentin is 12. So, pick one of those numbers, I'll show you here. These are all the um, horses, where are they? There's all the horses. So you pick a number, okay, whether it's gonna be five or whether it's gonna be 12, you pick one of those numbers, and we'll see whether you win the race, okay? All right, so let's go and have a little look at this. So we'll do it together. So I'm going to get this up here. So here we've got two dice. And I'm going to say that your number wins when it reaches 25. So let's go. Are you marked? Get set. Go. So we've got three. Eleven. I can't keep up with this. Seven's got three now. Six has got one. Where are we going? Six has got two now. Um, eight and seven are the winners so far. Seven's going ahead. We're going to go to all the way up to um, see the first one to get to 25. So then eight's got seven. Seven's going ahead. Keep going, seven. Eleven's got three. Three has got five. So there's been five threes. There's been 12 sevens now. There's been eight fives, seven sixes, four fours. Seven's going ahead now. So seven's got 16 sevens. We've got five elevens, quite a few there. Eleven fives, nine sixes, seven still going ahead. Eighteen sevens now, it's getting closer for seven. Nineteen sevens, twenty sevens, we've got five more. Twenty one, come on, seven. If you pick seven, then good luck. Thirteen fives, twelve sixes, twenty three sevens, twenty four sevens, twenty five sevens win. <laughs> Oh, okay, so from that there, we can see that number seven won um, the competition. Now, number five came, number five and eight came second. Number six came uh, third. So well done if you pick number seven. Um, now, there is a little reason that I'm doing this. And there's a reason that I'm doing this little game. Um, congratulations if you pick seven. But the reason I did it is because... What if I was to tell you that actually there's a way that I would have predicted that seven would have been the most common number to come up? And actually that's the case, okay, here. If I was to look at this, so if I can go back to this, and if I was to do, uh, let's do another 10 rolls, let's add another 10 rolls there, and then another 100 rolls, okay, and then another 10,000 rolls, Notice that when if I was to do 10,000 rolls, that 7 here would be the most likely. 7 would happen 1,697 times. 6 would then be the second, and the third, 8. Now, there is a reason for this, and it looks at sample spaces. So, let's go back to our work here, which is this one. So... There's a reason that seven comes up most common, okay? Now, when we're rolling two dice, let's just, very, let's just show you this. If I've got two dice here, now this is dice one, and this is dice two. Now, what are the different numbers that I can get on a dice? Well, I know the different numbers are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's for the first dice. For the second dice, I've got one, Two, three, four, five, and six. Brilliant. So, what do I do when I roll the dice? Well, I add them together, don't I? Because one plus one is my first number, which is two. 
and I can get two and one, sorry, one and two, which is three, one and three, which is four, one and four, which is five, one and five, which is six, and then we can add these up. So we add the numbers on the dice together, don't we? Two and three, which is five, two and four, which is six, seven, eight, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm going, what have I done here? Three, it should be wrong, it should be four, five, sorry, rushing ahead, six, seven, eight, and nine, and it's going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and it's going to be five plus one, which is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and six plus one, which is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So looking at this, what does this tell me if I look at this sample space? Well, what's the most common number when I roll two dice? Well, looking at this, I can see that one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six different ways of rolling a seven, whether that's six and a one, five and a two, four and a three, three and a four, two and a five, and one and a six, there are six, one, two, three, four, five, six different ways of rolling a seven. Whereas actually, if I look at two, there's only one way of rolling a two. So it's more likely to get set, we're way more likely to get seven than we are to get two. Now if I go back to my um, horse race, and have a look at this. This makes sense with this, doesn't it? Because look, the most likely number that came up was 7, and the lowest number was 2 and 12, and actually 1 doesn't come up at all. Now why doesn't 1 come up at all? The reason 1 doesn't come up at all is because you can't get 1 with 2 dice, can you? You can't, if I, if I roll 2 dice, you can't get the number 1. You can get 1 and 1, which is 2, okay? But only, I can only get that with one combination, whereas with 7, I can get that with lots of different combinations. So if I was to do this a lot of times, you can see that let seven comes up more often. So if you pick seven because you knew that at the start, well done. Okay, so this is the start of uh, probability sample spaces. And if you understand this, then the rest of this does actually become quite easy. Okay, so let's have a look at this first question. So the first question says, Williams throws two four-sided dice and adds up the scores. Complete the sample space diagram. So let's get this one down in our notes. So this one here is example one. So a sample space is a way of representing all of the different options that can come up. So here, my sample space, it's two four-sided dice. So the numbers are one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So what are the different options that can come up on this one? Well, it could be one plus one, which is two. One plus two, which is three. We've actually already got those, haven't we? One plus three, which is four. One plus four, which is five. 2 plus 1, which is 3, 2 plus 2, which is 4, 5, 6, 3 plus 1, 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, 4 plus 1 is 5, 6, 7, and 8. So this is all the different combinations that can come up with two dice, a four side is a dice 1 and dice 2. Now that is actually, an actual, that pass, that's a past paper question there. Okay, so this has come up. So that there was example one. Let's have a look at the next example. Let's check. Yep, super. So, Eddie throws a four-sided die and a spinner, which is drawn below. So notice this says A, B, C, D. Complete the sample space diagram. So this one here is a little bit different now. I'll make it big so you can see it first. Okay, so there's your sample space. I'm going to draw this out. This is example two. So on the dice I've got, it's a four-sided die, so one, two, three, four. On the spinner I've got A, B, C, and D. And if I'm drawing out this sample space, then I've got to do all of these. So if I get an A on the spinner, I can get A1, A2, A3, and A4. So there, that's all the possible combinations of getting A on the spinner and then the numbers on the dice. For B, it's B1, B2, B3, and B4. Nice and straightforward. So we're not adding them now. We're just looking at what the combinations are. The next one's C. So C1, C2, C3, and C4. And the last one, D1, D2, 
d2, d3, and d4. Brilliant. And that's that question done. So this is probably worth about two or three marks that. And it does come up on the foundation, and I've seen it come up on the higher as well. Brilliant. So the next one talks about probability and the probability of these things happening. So Ben throws two dice at the same time and adds up the score. Okay, the sample space diagram below represents all the possible outcomes. We've already done the sample space for you here. Find the probability that Ben's total score is six. So this one here is example three. Now, we're not looking at the amount of time or the different outcomes of getting six. Sorry, we're looking at the probability of getting six. So to do that, I write the probability of getting six. We know how to do that. And how many different options are there of getting six? Well, we just need to count them on the screen. I'll make it big so you can see it as well. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So that means it's going to be five out of. Now, what's the total amount of outcomes here? Well, if you, you can count them. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six. But there's six by six, isn't there? How many's in this grid here? Well, it's going to be six by six, which is equal to... 6 times 6, which is 36, so it's 5 out of 36, because there's 36 different possible combinations. Now, a lot of people here might see this and think, well, the probability you get is a 6 on two dice is 1 out of 6, but actually, we're looking at two dice, so we've got to draw this diagram, we've got to draw the sample space, okay? And we can see here that this is the probability. So, 5 out of 36, super. So let's have a look at the next one. So find the probability that Ben gets a score strictly greater than 4. So this here is example 4. So what we've got to do here is we've got to find out how many are greater than 4. And we can do that just by counting. So I'll make it big so you can see it again. So if we count this, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. There are 30 which are greater than 4, and I've just counted all of those. So, the probability of getting someone which is greater than um, 4, okay, we want someone which is greater than 4, was equal to, uh, I've lost count now, 1, 2, it was 30 out of 36. Notice the quick way I did that. I counted everything that was less than or equal to 4, which was 6. And then I took that away from the 36 to get um, 30 out of 36. So these are quite straightforward. So let's move on and let's have a look at a trickier one. Okay. So in a game, there are two fair spinners. The yellow dice has three sides numbered 1 to 3. The red spinner has four sides, numbered one to seven. Jane adds the two numbers together, work out the probability that she gets a total of eight. Now, this is only one mark, okay? Now, what they're expecting you to do with this is they're expecting you, well, with some of these questions, they're expecting you to do a sample space. So I'm just very going to quickly do a sample space for this one. This one here is example five. So it's... 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then the other one's just 1, 2, and 3. She's adding the numbers together, so it's going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2, 3, 4, and 5, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, 5, 6, 7. So what's the probability of getting 8? Well, I think you might have been able to spot this earlier on anyway. But the probability of getting 8, well, there's no possible combination of getting 8 here. So it's going to be 0 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 0 out of 12, which is just equal to 0. So the probability of getting 8 is nothing. Okay, But I've used the sample space to check all of the different possible outcomes. Okay, Brilliant. So, again, very similar. Michelle has two fair three-sided spinners. Michelle spins each one once. Each spinner lands on a number. Michelle multiplies these two numbers together to get a score. Work out the probability Michelle's score is 4. So what I'm going to suggest is that you pause and have a go at that one, because I think you should be able to have a go at these yourself now. So pause and have a little go at that. So 
So this one here is example six. So Michelle spins each spinner once. Okay. Each spinner lands on a number. Michelle multiplies these two numbers together to get her score. Now, it's, we need to be careful looking at these numbers here because the numbers are actually different. It says 1, 2, and 3 on the first spinner. And on the second spinner, the numbers are actually 2, 3, and 4. It says that she multiplies these two numbers together. Brilliant. So let's work out what our sample space is. So it's going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 times 3, which is 6. 3 times 1, which is equal to 3. 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. 4 times 1, which is equal to 4. 4 times 2, which is equal to 8. And 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. So, the question says, what is the probability that Michelle's score is 4? Well, how many of them are 4? 1, 2. So it's going to be 2 out of... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2 out of 9. Now, that is easy, but only if you know how to do a probability sample space. Okay, And that's what makes this tricky. You've got to remember how to do it, which is why it's so important to write these down in your notes. Okay, So, let's have a look at this one then. Natalie is playing a board game. She must throw two fair six-sided dice. She must get a 1 on each dice to start the game. Work out the probability that she will not start the game on her first throw. Now this takes us all the way back to this one here, doesn't it? Okay, let's have a little look at this. Sorry, I've got dots on it now because I've been writing on it. But Natalie is playing a board game. She must throw two fair six-sided dice. So this is two fair six-sided six, six dice. Now she must get a one on each dice, which is this one here, um, to start the game. So she must get one and a one to start the game. Work out the probability that she will not start the game on her first go. So, I think this one um, is pretty straightforward. If you know, again, how to do the sample space. So, we've got two dice here. And actually, what we're looking at is we're looking at the probability that she's not starting the game. So, what we've got to look at is all the different possible combinations. Now, there's only one way she can get one and one, which is when she gets two. Okay, And there's 35 other options of this. So the actual probability of her um, not starting is equal to, well, how many combinations are there that aren't one and one? One, two, three, four, five. Well, this is going to be 35. 36, take away one, which is equal to 35 over 6 by 6, which is equal to 36. Brilliant. So that's that question done. Let's check that. 35 over 36, brilliant. Again, that's only easy if you know how to use a sample space. Okay, let's have a look at some questions now. So, I'm going to put these up for you. I do think you should be able to fly through these, but only if you know how to do them, okay? So, pause now and have a little go at these questions. There's two worksheets here for you to have a look at. So, pause now and have a little go at that first worksheet. Okay, so I'm going to put the next one up now. So pause now and have a little go at that. Okay, I'm going to pop the answers up. So mark those in green. There's all your answers. Super. So thank you for watching this video on probability sample spaces. Remember that these are only easy if you know how and when to use them, okay? So it's worth getting these down in your notes. Remember the only way to learn maths is to do it. So thank you for watching this video and have a lovely day.